Hello and welcome by the Orchid Saga. My name is Elkian Wiesma and I'm an orchid grower from the Netherlands. And today we have a care collab about these beauties. I have several of them. And this is obviously my biggest one, my Berry Oda. And um, yeah, a care collab means that we, uh, orchid growers, or at least a few of us, share our care uh, tips and uh, guidance today. And like I said, today it's about the Berry Oda. And the other participants I will now have in the screen. So if you like uh, this orchid and maybe you have it or you want to buy it, I highly suggest you check these videos. So um, you have some uh, quite some care tips, I believe, uh, about this orchid. And you can uh, apply those tips in your uh, area, in your climate. I think that's very important as well. So like I said, I'm an orchid grower from the Netherlands. So that doesn't mean that my care will suit for your uh, environment, your climate, etc. But I hope to give you a, a general idea of what I do. And um, as you all probably already saw that I, uh, well, these keikis are in uh, a semi-hydroponic setup because that's a bit easier for me to water. But I uh, like uh, the more self-watering pots. So I... Uh, I think about 90% of my orchids I grow self-watering and also my berry oda. And this one I have for quite some years. And normally it blooms very well and I, I have I had a few spikes here. These blooms are just over. And here in the back, I think you can see we have so a few more spikes, actually two. Let me see, you can see there's one and here in the front. So I will have a few spikes in the near future. And, um, but it, it can bloom more with way more spikes. But I think that in winter I had it a little bit too dark. The leaves aren't very dark, but um, yeah, a bit on the dark side, um, I think. So um, yeah, I think I had it a little too, too dark, like I said. So therefore I do not have as much spikes as I usually have. But um, yeah, it, it will uh, will be fine. And this berry oda, yeah, like I said, it's a model plant. It gives quite some keikis. I have, for example, another keiki here already growing with the roots. And let me check, I have more. One is starting there that needs a spray because I have aphids on it. Let me zoom in. You can see the aphids there, I think, the br little green spots. I have that uh, going on this this year, David. So and apparently this one tastes uh, very well, <laughs> so I need to spray it quite often. But um, that's not big of a problem. You can get rid of the aphids quite easily, but they keep coming back, so that's a bit of a uh, problem, <laughs> hustle. Um, so yeah, a keiki uh, machine. I would rather, uh, even though this is quite a fairly large plant, if you can see. Um, but it doesn't give much new growths underneath here on the base of the plants as I would like. We have some older leaves that can go off uh, or out of the pot, of course. But you can see I have a top layer from uh, with pebbles. This is something that I saw on Annabelle's channel. Um, it prevents um, the arc of the pot from getting a, a top dry layer. It really works well, and I like the look of pebbles. So the rest is, well, I see some LECA. And to be honest, I th yeah, LECA and uh, Ceramus, I think. Because this is a fairly older plant in my, uh, in my uh, collection. So I started with, uh, when I started uh, cell watering with LECA and uh, Ceramus. These days I'm really uh, liking the pumice. So if I ever had to repot this one, it would go into the pumice. It's so annoying. Look at this. You see? The aphids there. So yeah, a keiki with aphids, so that needs spraying as well. <laughs> but anyhow, so yeah, quite a lot of keikis. And um, this is the second load from last year. I had about 12 keikis. There's a leaf there that should go out. <laughs> And also the cake is a bloom uh, quite easily. And this one is still in bloom, so we can have a look at the blooms already. So that's nice. The most, a few of them are going over, but 
uh, that cakey there had a spike already and this one so yeah the cakeys uh, do bloom fairly quickly and i think that's very nice and they really like a uh, cell watering semi hydroponic setup i think you can see the roots there and we have this one is making uh, quite some roots and the one next to it as well as you can see on the date it's from uh, 21 so and it's uh, June yeah June so almost a year in self-watering or yeah same hydroponic setup and they took very well so that's beautiful but I must admit that uh, my friends and family that do grow orchids already have a berry oda <laughs> So uh, I have quite some cakes. I have no idea what to do with them at this moment, but I let them grow and uh, who knows. But it keeps making new cakeys. And uh, I must admit, if you leave them on, they will grow, but it, they, they look a little bit tatty. I'm not sure if that's the right word, but you have a cane with a cakey. That cakey can give another cakey, etc. I'm not liking the look of that. So I get the, the cakeys off. And yeah, I have so many, I could almost throw them away, but I can't. So I always pot them up and someday I will find a new home for them. So, um, yeah, I have some gifts. But like I said, my friends and family already have a berry oda because I had so many cakes throughout uh, the years. Let me uh, stand up and let me give you an idea of the greenhouse as today it's a... Uh, fairly a nice sunny day and this greenhouse is facing southwest so in spring and summer it gets quite some light but like i said in winter on the dull days it's fairly um a distance away from the yeah the, the window sort of window um so it doesn't get as much light i think it's not uh, too bad as you can see it's not that dark but um i recently did uh, install a uh, LED lamp above it and after that it started spiking so yeah I think it needed a little bit more light so uh, but it's overall doing well and it's a very vigorous grower if you have it and you have it uh, happy I think it's not demanding a much different uh, of a difficult care but intermediate not too not too cold but it can take some 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 colder temperatures and I think you probably can put it in almost direct sun as well. I didn't do that. I would class it uh, more as intermediate because it can get sunburned. But uh, yeah, it's a very vigorous plant plant, and it's not hard to, uh, to grow. I had this when I just bought it. It had, it was a fairly big harvest as well. It had quite some roots and I did a repot, but I didn't take all, everything out because it had so many beautiful roots. And then I, Notice that it had bush snails and the roots were gone, the new roots wouldn't grow. So I took it out, cleaned everything, it was basically rootless. And I put it up again, but it didn't take long and the pot was filled with roots again. So it's a very, very vigorous one. And I think you can also see it uh, when you look at the keikis. Only a single cane and it doesn't mind putting out roots. So yeah. It's, it's not that hard to grow. And it's a beautiful, uh, beautiful little purple blooms it has with a nice honey smell to it, which can be for some people uh, quite strong. I don't think it's too strong. I uh, really uh, like uh, honey and honey fragrances. So yeah, it can be, uh, can be a bit overwhelming maybe for some people. So yeah, and in winter I, uh, I have a Arcad Care chart so let's uh, let's get a chart in screen and have it a little talk about it because this one gets the same care so yeah i came up with this uh the arcade saga care chart um because i had some questions and i did answer them in my q a my first q a a couple of days ago and i came up with this chart and um, i think it's very easy so you have an overall idea and you can pause it if it goes too quick, if you want to uh, have a closer look at it. But in general, in winter, I give it a, a feeding level of 30 up to 80 parts per million. The pH is always around 6, 6.3. And I try to give them at least 12 hours uh, of light. 
and it depends on the season if it's daylight or uh, LED uh, lights so it's partial sometimes I'm starting up the days with a few hours of extra light and in the evening so at least 12 hours and thereby even in the bit colder temperatures the orchids uh, still grow they slow down but they keep growing in most cases so that's uh, that's beautiful and the berry odor doesn't mind so that uh, always keeps growing <laughs> but like i said i would la uh, uh, love some more canes some new canes instead of cakeys but anyhow so yeah and in summer you can see that is uh, the time that i feed them the highest uh, yeah, somewhere between 80 and 150 parts per million and it varies so if I use 150 the next week or next two weeks I will get around 80 since I have this system I uh, barely have any salt builds up I have it on plants that do not so well or uh, just repotted uh, plants that I give a little bit too much fertilize these days I know what to do so I don't ha have that happen uh, as much anymore but yeah, those are, are the only situations where or cases where I uh, could have some salt built up. But yeah, I like to slow it down and I uh, check my uh, reservoirs every three to four months um, because I don't flush and thereby the pH likes to go downwards quite, uh, quite quick in some cases. So I use some calcium powder, um, yeah, like I said, every three to four months and that will help to get the pH back to seven or at the highest at eight but I like to uh, stick the pH around uh, seven and as you can see I water with the pH around six six point three so I uh, pH it down a little bit to compensate and that works uh, very well I do this for uh, at least two years now and uh, yeah my plants uh, are uh, responding to it uh, very beautifully so in the temperatures in winter um, or at least I try to keep it at uh, 18 degrees at night. Daylight uh, it out almost automatically uh, warms up a little bit because of the, the sun that hit is hitting the greenhouse. But most of the times, uh, yeah, in winter and uh, fall, also a little bit in spring still, but then it drops uh, at night. And I keep it uh, with my heaters, these two guys at uh, around 18 uh, at least at night I did measure uh, it at the reservoirs and when I have it at 18 um, the temperature of the reservoirs is probably around 15 16 and these adrobiums the baryotis can take that but I have some difficulties with my then phalaenopsis that's why you see those leaves here but that's for another video those are hot to warm growers so I, uh, I have a plan for it, but it's, uh, like I said, another video. This one can take it. It doesn't mind it at all. And I believe that N Nina from Ninja Orchids uh, keep hers uh, outside all year. So it's, she doesn't have the freezing temperatures, but fairly cold temperatures, I think. And uh, they do fine. So no problem there. So yeah, I think I covered uh, everything. And as usual, if you have any questions, please uh, leave them in the comment section below. And if you didn't already have, please consider subscribing to my channel. I would really appreciate it. Thank you for watching and I hope to see you at one of my next videos. Bye bye.